Hey. Jody. What? Hello. Hello. How's it going today? I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging We're in hanging there. In I, need there. Some, I need some coffee. Kind of like, I need more coffee. For sure. I know I just ran out right before we hopped on. Um, mm. We are very excited to have you all here today. We have the amazing Pete Kazanji with us. In the meantime, we'll let some people hop on. But Pete, you said uh, you're hanging Yo. in there. How uh, how you doing? How's your summer? Do we have any travel plans? Where are you at right now? <laughs> I'm actually in Atlanta right now, which is okay. kind of a, yeah. We're um, visiting a bunch of Atrium customers out here, um, and I think that's why I'm a little like dragging a little bit here. Took out probably like 30 people last night. Um, customers in like this like restaurant that's like way hipper than I deserve to be at, and. Uh, you know, as as a bunch of sales leaders have a tendency to do things got kind of a little, little little rowdy. So, uh, you know, so I, <laughs> today's like a three cup of coffee day. So that's there the upshot. Go. And then we have like How- two more events throughout the rest of the week, which would be exciting. <laughs> so I'm just so like we we get a whole lot myself. of you this week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How many cups of coffee have we had so far? Uh, I think it's two. That's the two. other thing okay. too. It's like okay. Atlanta's so hot that like you like you want to have like iced coffee. And right. so, like, you can't just. I'm here in this like we work, so I haven't. Uh, they, they don't have iced coffee capability. They have like coffee, coffee capability. So maybe sure, I'll run out sure. of Starbucks after this. <laughs> yeah, put in put in a special request. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's that heat? I know we were just in Austin for the summit, and it was 108, which was uh, oh, not what I'm yeah. used to. Yeah, it's not nothing here, but I'm in this we work, and I'm like actually like on the verge of shivering right now, which is like hilarious because the air conditioning is like cranked so high. Yeah, but, they don't mess around. Yeah, it's like pretty, it's pretty aggressive, but it's all good. I'm having a good time. Our new VP of sales is based here. This woman named Melina Call, she used to be a sales leader at Sales Loft and, um, and, and at Flock. And so she's, she's based in Atlanta. So came out here to spend a week with her. She was out in San Francisco a few, like a month ago, spent a week out there. So we're going to be in, in Atlanta quite a bit. And we have a ton of customers out here too, which is funny. Like I was, I was talking with our customers last night. I was like, on a per capita basis, we probably have like, you know, um, more customers in Atlanta than anywhere else. Like we have more customers in like San Francisco and like New York sure. and kind of like, you know, your typical like tech centers. But if you like then do it on a per capita basis, it would, like I think Atlanta's like much like at the head of the pack, which is kind of interesting. Weird little thing. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty new for the city, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, amazing sales culture. Obviously, like Sales Loft is here, uh, SaaS Optics is here, Sonar is here, Flock Safety is here, a bunch of other folks as well. So great, great, great community. We're actually having a, an event on Thursday night too. That's not just customer centric. Last night was like the VIP customer thing, and then on on Thursday night we're like renting out this bar um, called Bazzotti. That uh, so I think we should have way more folks then. So that should be a that should be a party, a party at Bazzotti. Oh, you heard it here first. If you're in Atlanta, go get them. Get people yeah, to- I can. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. Well, let's see. We are just a few minutes in here. I guess we will go ahead and get going for those of you who are here. We are here today to talk about coaching. We are ready for Go Coach or Go Home, Knock Your Revenue Out of the Park with Atrium's co founder and CRO, Pete Kazanji. Yo. So we'll get into it. In just a minute, we have some lovely coaches here. And before we begin, today's event is indeed hosted by the team at Modern Sales Pros. So for those of you not familiar, Modern Sales Pros is the world's largest revenue leadership community for those in sales management, sales and rev ops, sales development, and the related supporting disciplines, aka our Modern Sales Pros to make it significantly shorter. So our mission is to create an environment for our now 27K and growing members to answer questions they'd struggle to answer on their own and see around corners they may not know about. We do that through these great live sessions and through our robust online forum and in-person events like what Pete was just mentioning and our lovely summit. So for those of you who weren't previously admitted, you should now have access to the community. If you don't, go ahead and drop our team a line and we will get to you from there. So for some nice ground rules here, we're excited to dive in, but just some notes on housekeeping. If you have a question for Pete, please do use the Q&A function and we'll be sure to get to those during the event. 
the more you interact, the more you'll get out of it. And secondly, yes, this panel, or sorry, this masterclass is indeed being recorded. Um, you'll be able to access this recording and the key takeaways on the previous events page of the MSP website. Next, we will go ahead and hop to our sponsor here. Our founder of MSP and the parent company is Atrium. They are the sponsor of the event today, and I'm going to let Pete go ahead and do the talking here, introduce Atrium and himself, and run the show. I'll be back on for a few closing notes at the very end. Go ahead, Pete. Wonder yeah, for sure. Um, hey, everyone. Um, I'm really stoked to be talking about... Um, you know, data-driven coaching here today is going to be super fun. For folks who aren't familiar, uh, Atrium makes data-driven sales management software. Way to think about that is it's software that helps AE, SDR, CS managers, like sales managers, use data to improve team performance. And so the way that it does that is by continuously monitoring dozens and dozens of um, core metrics for those AE, SDRs, AM, CSMs, uh, monitoring those KPIs and then kind of proactively alerting managers and leadership when something is off with reps, teams, so on. And so what this means is that managers can get to coaching insights faster about their reps um, and they can drive positive behavior change and win. And so the great thing about all this is it takes like two minutes to set up through a read-only connection to your Salesforce account. Um, it's like super super easy peasy to just like er, turn on a you know a free free hm account and like all of a sudden you've got a world-class metrics harness which is pretty great um so that's a little bit about us um a little bit of background on me my um you know this is my second software company um my last software company was a company called talent bin started in 2010 it was acquired by monster worldwide in um uh, in 2014. And so at Talent Bin, that was kind of how I got used to, or like how I got familiar with um, kind of like modern sales. I was a, a business generalist founder, first sales rep, first sales manager, sales leader, so on and so forth. When we were acquired by Monster, um, sales org was like around 20 people, like SDR plus AE plus um, CS, like all in. Um, and, and then I, when I went to Monster, I was responsible for new product sales there. It was a little bit of a change of pace. It was like a thousand sale, sellers there. It was like totally, you know, dramatically different um, kind of sales organization there. And like that just kind of helped me understand like the struggles that organizations have around using data to, to manage their teams and kind of like help improve rep performance. Um, subsequent to that, in addition to starting Atrium, I... Um, I wrote a book on startup sales called Founding Sales uh, and, and also started Modern Sales Pro. So as, as I like to say, just think about, think about sales just a little bit here. Um, wonderful. But like the thing that I'm really excited about today is talking about data-driven coaching, um, which is a, a big kind of like topic uh, that's near and dear to my heart. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to share my screen. And then we're going to jump into the Hall of Mirrors here really quickly. Um, cool. So you guys should be able to see my screen here. Um, got a bunch of like great great stuff to kind of go through here to talk to talk through how to think about using data to actually coach um, and like actually make things actionable there. Uh, some of my favorite coaching resources as of late, um, these are two um, really fantastic books on um, on sales management and sales coaching. The, the first one here is Five Secrets of a Sales Coach um, by Hillman Sori and Corey Bray. It's really fun. It's a quick read. Um, it's written as a narrative. So it's like total page turner, right? So it's like written as a, as like a, as like a parable, but has lots of really great um, coaching and sales management um, kind of methodologies in it, but like written as a, as a story. So it's kind of fun. And then um, Michelle Vazana's book, Crushing Quota, which is on, you know, more about data-driven uh, sales management, like doing a good, like good job around like the craft and execution of sales management. Um, we're going to go ahead and drop a link here. If anybody wants a copy of these, like, copies of these books you can just sign up for for that through that um through that sign up link because they're they're two of the best books out there right now on on sales management um which historically has like not really been something that there's been as much writing on and kind of resources on as there should be which is unfortunate because sales management is extremely extremely important and we're kind of going to get into like why it's important and how to how best to do this you know, data-driven sales coaching. Um, but one of the reasons why it's so important 
is because managers are really the crux of um, impact in the in the organization, right? And so when you have high performing managers, really great things happen across your orgs. Um, you get higher rep productivity. This is a really important thing. What ends up happening is, is like reps have a tendency to be um, top performers. Um, there's all their great things too, like better retention, higher level of effort, but really like this is the big thing here because what ends up happening is, and these are some of the stats from Michelle's lovely book here, um, the top 25% of managers generate more revenue than the bottom 25%, like 40% more revenue, um, which is great. And the way that they do that, so it's, it's actually not through making their top performers crazier and like having them perform even higher um, which unfortunately is just like the, the human based nature of sales is very difficult to do like we only have each of us only has 40 hours you know maybe, maybe 50 40 or 50 hours in the week um, so it's often very difficult to get a top performer to produce more because you know at a certain point you're capped out but what you can do is you can get your underperformers or your middle performers and you can make them more effective and that's really kind of the crux of data-driven coaching is it's, it's grabbing the people who are like kind of the middle of the pack, or maybe like the bottom of the pack, middle of the pack, um, and like just shifting them up um, like one step, like middle of the pack to like upper middle of the pack or upper middle of the pack to like top performer. And, and so what ends up happening is like that's the craft of sales management is doing that. And, and that's how you end up with with this and that's also how you end up with with this it's not through like you know getting your top performers to perform higher it's about taking people who are kind of like in the middle of like you know in the middle of the pack and and like let and pulling them up even higher and so the challenge with this and the reason why managers oftentimes struggle to um to do this is that um, manager enablement and like and then the tooling that we provide to managers in order to help them more effectively manage is is really not great um, kind of along two vectors one you know manager enablement ends up being pretty much an afterthought there um, if you think about where sales managers come from you know they're promoted account executives they're promoted SDRs etc those folks are not necessarily from you know, they don't have a background in data analysis um, and, you know, they, they come from being reps, right? And doing reps, that, rep things. And then moreover, most enablement resources go to individual contributors first and foremost. Um, the second thing too, is that if you think about like the, the, the assets and like the, the tooling that we provide managers to, to, to do this, it's actually like, it's not made for them. It's not for them. Um, it ends up being what I like to call like, analytics tools for analysts, if you will. So like Salesforce dashboards or BI or what have you, is like really they're designed for, you know, for, for analysts. They're not designed for managers to use that data and to apply it, um, you know, to apply it, to apply it tactically. Um, and so the reason why that's problematic is because there's actually like a whole set of things that, that managers should be doing to make themselves more effective. Um, to do the thing that we were talking about earlier around like in order to make some like in order to be a high performing manager, these are the various things that like behaviors that you ought to be engaging in. Yes, you should be doing deal inspection and strategy if you're an account executive manager. Um, but most managers don't really have like a problem around this because like they're kind of drawn to like deal <laughs> deal inspection because like that's what they used to do. Um, but more importantly, the things that they have to do is like they should be bringing data into their one-on-ones, right? They should be bringing data into their one-on-ones like they should, and not talking about deals there. They should be tracking progress towards goals, not just from a lagging indicator standpoint, like bookings if you're an AE or, uh, or like opportunity creation if you're an SDR, but also precursors to them as well, like leading indicators, activity metrics, um, quality metrics as well. So they need to be tracking progress for those goals. Um, when they have new reps who are, ramping they need it's really important to be tracking the progress on those on on that ramp um because it's extraordinarily critical time during um you know during the new hire and then for folks who are already you know ramped up or whatever um identifying the issues like 
of a given rep, like here's this person, what's the biggest area of improvement right now? So being able to identify those issues and then fix it, like coach, that's the coaching behavior. And then on the flip side, see what their top performers are doing and then be able to standardize that across the team. They're, like these are all things that managers need to be doing and, and specifically doing these things right here or like essentially doing all these things makes it such that you will catch issues um, that then you can fix in order to raise the performance of your, you know, your AEs or your SDRs or what have you. And in so doing, you'll drive higher performance of your team across the board. Because at the end of the day, this is like a, it's like kind of obvious if you think about it, but like the way that you get to your bookings goal or where you get to your opportunity creation goal is, is like through the addition of all the performance of all the people on your team. And so if you want to make that, you know, top line revenue or top line, you know, pipeline creation or whatever, better the mechanism by which to do that is to, to drive better performance out of each of the individuals on your team. Um, and so unfortunately, because, you know, managers are insufficiently invested in there, um, oftentimes like what they end up doing is they just spend their time doing like lots of deal inspection, um, which is like a very low leverage way of, um, of, of managing like, Hey, what's going on with this deal? What's going on in this deal? Or like an SDR land, it's like, Hey, more activity, more activity versus kind of like dialing into, you know, these different things right here. And so what my claim would be to you all is the reasons why it's important to use data is largely because it's the way to get leverage on your, like on your time as a manager. Um, and it's a way to get out of like what we like to call it data, right? Anecdotes. Um, and so these are some of the ways that, you know, with that people will oftentimes, like these are some of the pathologies that people will engage in. So like, as an example, riding along on calls with all of your AEs is like fairly low leverage, right? Like, it's a good thing to do, but if you're only doing that, it's like fairly low leverage. Like, are you on the right call where they're going to be like, where they're going to have this mistake or what have you. And then moreover, you're only seeing the information from calls at that point as opposed to the other like 50 or like 70 percent of ae time which is involved with like you know email and like document preparation and so on and so forth right um moreover um listening to hours of calls is also very low leverage even if you like you know you jump it up to like 1.5x it's uh it's still fairly fairly low leverage um it's very difficult with like in a remote environment, like remote staff with hybrid, you know, work from home organizations. It's oftentimes very difficult to, to have the organic instrumentation of kind of like, Hey, is it like loud on the sales floor? Am I seeing people engage in the right level of activity, et cetera. Um, and then moreover, just like, you know, closing deals for your reps as an AE manager versus like coaching them and like, make and elevating them that's extremely low leverage right like you are not in the business of being a super rep your job is to be a manager and to make your you know a manager who coaches reps to be more successful and you know give me that right taking the deal from them and and getting it over the line is not um you know, is not a highly successful way of doing that and so the cool thing is is that like by using data you can see around corners Right. You can, by paying attention to leading indicators, you can see around corners and not be surprised. And then moreover, by using data, there's a feedback loop to it where by identifying the issues, you know, using data to identify issues, coach the resolution of that, then looking at the same metric that you saw was problematic in the first place to see if that's getting, if that's remediating, you have this wonderful feedback loop where you can see, is it working? Is it working? Is it working? Right. Um, and, and unfortunately, you can't do that if you're not using data. And so that loop that I was just describing is a really powerful way to think about what your job is as as a manager. Right. Um, this is actually stolen from this guy named um, John Boyd, who is a, um, a fighter pilot and a fire fighter pilot instructor. And he coined this concept of the, the OODA loop, the observe, orient, decide and act loop um it's talked about it's a really good book here um it's talked about in here where essentially what you're doing is you're observing the world or you're seeing what's going on like oh okay i'm seeing this issue um you're then figuring out you're orienting right you're figuring out what is driving that issue what is like potentially the root causes etc you then want to fix that so you decide the action that you you want to take like you you know, come up with some sort of prescription and then you take an action, right? In this case, this is all about like, 
air to air combat, <laughs> which is like maybe a little aggressive. Um, but the same thing applies. Like, this is very popular in the startup community because this like information processing loop that is like being described here is is what startups are constantly doing with respect to like finding product market fit. And it's also what we as managers need to be doing um, with our with our reps to kind of like see what their issues are, understand exactly like, you know, what the root, potential root cause might be and then decide on the prescription and then act and then loop back and see like, did it get fixed? And so you can kind of see what that looks like in um, in practice here where like you want to be able to be doing that. Um, you want to be able to be doing that loop, but when you don't have data, it's very difficult for for you to do that. And so, like some examples of what that kind of like looks like in practice here is, and you know, folks may <laughs> may recognize this is when you don't have data, when you want to observe and detect things, it's like, oh man, I didn't see that. I saw it after the fact, right? Um, if you want to go ahead and inspect, it's like, oh, I'm going to ask some questions about this. The problem is like when you decide whether or not you're, you know, you're like, you know, the action that you want to take because you don't have sufficient information in which to, you know, sufficient information with which to like make a judgment. Oftentimes you like are second guessing yourself. Um, and so it's like, how do I know that I write? I don't want to jump down this rep's throat. Oh man. Right. And so all of that makes it such that you can't act. And like, that's the worst possible thing, right? And I think we've all probably had that. Um, I think we've all probably had that experience where, you know, you have a spidey sense, you feel like something's going on, but like, you don't have the relevant data to like kind of really prove it to yourself or like, you know, the leg to stand on. And so you just kind of like clench and like, don't do anything with, uh, with it, uh, which is not good. Like, that's not what we're supposed to do as managers. And so the, but like the better approach here is w with data, it's more, the it's a much better outcome. So instead instead of like not seeing things, you see something weird over here. Like, huh, I see like a leading indicator is like being, you know, is being funky over here. I see this, like this metric looks like, looks grumpy. Next, you're able to inspect and kind of like reason about it, like orient, say like, oh, okay, well, like, I'm going to ask a couple other questions here. Like, oh, is it, you know, oh, their their customer facing meeting volume is low. That's weird, right? Like, okay, is that because they don't have enough opportunities? No, they do have enough opportunities. That's weird. Hmm. Is it because, you know, um, is it because their activity is low? Like what's going on, on on there? Are they actually touching there? And like kind of looking at various metrics. Oh, okay. Then you can narrow in on what the actual problem is and then come up with a prescription associated with that to then drive a resolution. And so this is kind of like what that looks like in practice. Um, the probably the best place to do this sort of thing is in a managerial one-on-one. -on -one. Again, it's a metrics-based one-on-one, right? A coaching one-on-one, -on -one, as opposed to a pipeline and like deal inspection um, meeting, which oftentimes is called a one-on-one, -on -one, but like is not actually a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so, in this case, you know, you create an agenda, you create the relevant assets. We'll talk a little bit more about this um, in a second. How to do that. Um, you schedule the time and then importantly what you do, this is now recurring and then you've got this recurring loop here where like the, you know, ahead of your one-on-one, -on -one, the manager reviews the assets, like, you know, does this action right here. Like, oh, okay, I see something that's going on here and we're going to talk about it in our one-on-one, -on -one, right? Preps the questions the coaching, discusses it with the rep, like, hey, I'm seeing this right here, right? How does this sound? Is this landing? To like, is this on your radar? Am I thinking about this wrong? Um, and then the manager and the rep come together to co-create a solution associated with that and then loop back again in a week or two weeks, whatever your, your kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, cadence is there to see, okay, did that remediate, right? Um, and so the, um, the framework that actually they have that uh, Corey and Hillman talk about in... Um, in five of secrets of the sales coach is uh is this coach framework so challenge yeah you know, challenge outline action plan consequences and hold accountable here it's a cute little acronym um but it kind of is related to the stuff above there and again like i can't um you know recommend this book highly enough and if folks if folks want a copy go ahead and um, you can sign up for that with the link that we're going to drop there and so one of the things that they talk about in that book and, and kind of in general is understanding what is the difference like what's coaching versus like what's not coaching and and like so in this case you can kind of see some some examples of like what is not coaching 
versus you know successful coaching using using data. Um, and so I'll kind of like walk through some examples here. So, you know, uh, coaching on a deal front might be like, oh, okay, like, hey, when's the Lockheed deal coming in? It's not like super helpful there versus showing up with some information saying, hey, what's, you know, what's concerning with the Lockheed deal? I've noticed that we seem to only be engaged with three contacts there, right? That's a piece of data, right? It seems like we're only engaged with three contacts there. Given the opportunity size that we're looking at here, you know, generally speaking, I would imagine that we would be engaged with like, you know, six or seven stakeholders. Can you help me understand why you're confident about this? You know, even though we're engaged, oh, okay, I haven't modeled the other four people that like I've engaged with in the account. Oh, okay, wonderful. Like, let's get that in the CRM or, oh, that's a really good point. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, another example would be like the roll up of this as relates to forecasts. Like, hey, can you make this forecast bigger? Well, you know, that's kind of a nonsense thing to ask a rep. Like, oh, you want me to like, pretend that deals are that are like not going to close are going to close um instead what we should be looking at is some or the way we should be talking about this is something like hey i noticed that your forecast is pacing behind what do you think we could potentially do to pull that for you know are there any deals that we can pull forward or like alternatively and sometimes this is just the case like are we just hosed <laughs> for this this period like for this quarter and then how are we going to avoid doing that in the um, in the future, um, and so you can kind of see other examples of this too. Like, you know, I need you to do more activity versus, hey, I've noticed that your meeting volumes over the last four weeks have been lighter than usual, like as compared to you usual. What do you think might be contributing to that? Versus, hey, I need you to do more activity. It's like, look, here's this information that I've been observing. Like, it's not because I'm the big bad wolf. Um, here's this information I'm observing. Can you help me understand? What, what what might be what might be going up on that or going on there and so you as you can see by having by bringing data to those coaching um, conversations not only to identify the issue which is what we talked about here right like identifying the thing to actually be talked about but also bringing it into the conversation makes it such that it's more likely to happen um, and like the information is largely irrefutable. <laughs> Right. So rather than um, having a bunch of opinions that are being discussed, uh, instead, you're literally talking about a piece of data. And so instead, what you guys can can focus in on is how to how to remediate that situation versus, um, you know, versus quibbling over whether or not that situation is, <clears throat> is the uh, is the case. Um, wonderful. So, like, these are some examples of, you know, how to do coaching, um, like in kind of in the micro you know, the microcosm there. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about like how to systematize this because, you know, even if you understand that you can do this right here, um, making sure that you're weaving it into, um, making sure that you're weaving it into your operating rhythm will make it such that you are like, it is more likely to happen um, because we have this joke at, at Atrium um, we say that calendar is destiny. And so by making sure that things are on the calendar in a recurring capacity, you will make sure that they actually happen. Um, and, and as a result, you know, you'll get the outcomes that you want. So these are some examples. Usually like the best way to do that from an operating rhythm standpoint is making, is like essentially recurring meetings. And so these are a number of examples of, um, you know, uh, recurring operating rhythm meetings that make it such that because they are tied with the relevant uh, data assets that this systematizes the observation, like the consumption and reasoning of those data assets because they're on the calendar. Um, so some examples of that, like pipeline review, not really super difficult <laughs> to, to get reps and, and managers to do pipeline review or do deal strategy meetings. Um, probably one of the more impactful things that you can have is a um, every other week one-on-one -on -one that is distinct from pipeline reviews. Uh, and this is actually something that are, um, I think I actually, I, I have a master class on data driven one on ones and like specifically like what, like how to, how to bring data into a one on one. Um, and, and so this is just an extremely powerful way of making sure that the manager is systematizing the observation of, um, of that data in order to drive those coaching conversations, as kind of discussed in this, um, in this visual up here. So these are the different types of, and then like, you know, a QBR is kind of like a, a really ornate one-on-one -on -one. happens like quarterly, 
look back across the quarter, see what happened, you know, see what we're going to fix in the future, et cetera. Um, so then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, these are kind of examples of like, this is what these meetings right here kind of like cascaded across an entire like, like month of operating would look like, right? So you got week one, week two, week three. And then what you want to do is you want to structure the calendar in such a way that, um, you know, that these events, that these meetings are happening, but importantly, what they're like, what's happening is they're, they're happening in a cadence fashion. And then there's time, you know, in, on the calendar for like the execution after the meetings to happen as, as well. Um, so then the other thing that you want to like to systematize observation, it's one thing to make sure that like the space is available on the calendar. That's great. But then the other thing too, is like, you want to have the, um, you know, the assets in hand as, uh, as well. Right. And so the, there's kind of like two ways to kind of like primarily do that. Like, obviously um, we like to think about data driven sales management as like extending the, the, the types of ways that you can use data to manage your team. But like for the most part, the way I think people oftentimes think about this is like reports and dashboards. And so a really helpful kind of framework for thinking about like reports and dashboards is one, what a report does is it answers a specific question. Right, it answers a question that like matters to you. An example of that might be, how many ops have the SDRs created so far this month? Right, that's a question it's answered by a by a report. Or how many opportunities does each account executive own right now? It's a different question. Um, how much pipeline is closing in the coming ninety days on a per rep basis? That's a forecasting question. Right, like it's different than some of these other ones. Or how many emails did each SDR send last week? It's an activity question, right? And it's it's an activity look back question. Um, and so the way to think about this, like each report <clears throat> should be answering a specific question. And then a dashboard is a roll up, right? It's like a bundle of these, these various reports. And so a dashboard, the way to think about a dashboard uh, um, is that it's a, it's a piece, like it's a bundle of information or a bundle of questions that should be used at a given point in time, right? Um, and this is a really big thing that people oftentimes screw up is like they, they'll create these like absolutely gigantic like sprawling dashboards with like, t you know, 20 tiles on it or 40 tiles on it or whatever and you just like get lost in it because it's not very specific. Like we call it the wall of charts. Like you don't want the wall of charts. Um, and the reason why that's problematic is because what you want is you want something that's very, very targeted. Like, hey, this is our stand-up, right? This is our daily stand-up for the SDR team or the AE team. And so the information that's going to be present in there is going to be totally different than the information that is present in, you know, for a, in a dashboard that's used in like a sales team meeting, right? Because the, the, the daily stand-up one might be look at, you know, how much activity happened yesterday, like how many emails were sent or how many calls were made, what have you. And then it might have like a progress so far this week, like, and then what's the total so far this week? That's, those are going to be a different set of questions than what you would want to see in like a sales team meeting or maybe, you know, an end of month look back or, or what have you. And so if you, if you combine, you know, all those into like a given dashboard, you're just going to get lost <laughs> in there. And that's why it's really important to say, Hey, each dashboard should be thought of as like, this is used at this consumption at like point to do these specific things right here. The other thing to think about is what I like to say is multiple views per metric. So usually one view of, of a given metric is, is, is often not enough. Um, and so, um, you know, a, a good example of this would be like, okay, how many new opportunities has, you know, this rep have in the trailing 90 days, right? Like, are they getting fed enough? That would be like one question. But then the problem is, is that if you don't have a trend associated with that, um, what you might miss is the fact that that's actually been declining for a number of weeks, but you wouldn't notice it because you were only looking at the total. And this is why it can be really powerful to have a total plus a trend um, next to it. And we'll show you a little bit more of kind of like what that looks like in practice um, in some of the slides below here. Um, so then how, like, how do you actually make this happen? Like, how do you construct these assets? Well, kind of like the, the, like the prototypical way of doing that is, is in CRM reporting and kind of like business intelligence, right? So the good news associated with them is that, um, 
you know, they've, they've been around for a while. People are familiar with them. The downside associated with them is that they're, um, you know, oftentimes like you have to build them yourself, right? Like you have to have to make the reports in question. Um, you got to prepare the relevant data and then moreover, they have to be like, you have to interpret them. And so um, the, the, you know, the, the benefits of something like a purpose-made data-driven sales management software like Atrium is that, um, you know, while it can't answer every single question in the world, like BI, like you can answer any question you want just as long as you have a BI architect to do it, the, the benefit of it, of, of like purpose-made software is like it's extremely quick to set up. It takes a couple of minutes to do. Um, everything's pre-baked, like all the KPIs you could possibly want, like, you know, opportunity ownership and bookings and win rate and ASP and, and customer facing meeting volume and all the sort of things that like you ought to care about are already done um, for you. And then moreover, it's being interpreted for, um, for the manager. Um, and again, like the downside is it's like, you can't, answer every single question that, like in the world that somebody would concoct. But the important thing is that you can answer the questions that matter for managing, for managing your teams. Um, so let's go ahead and look at like how you kind of systematize this and how to have the assets in, in hand. And so you now this would be an example of, you know, multiple views with a metric. This is a pretty straightforward metric. This is customer facing meetings on calendar. And so what you can see here is like this one right here is the total. We can see, okay, like this guy right here is at the top of the pack. This guy, you know, right down here is a little bit lower. This, you know, this is customer facing meetings this month. And so the question that is being answered here is how many meetings are, you know, how many meetings are each of my reps ha have each of my reps had this month? And so as a result, is there anyone who's lagging? Is there anyone who's like kicking ass and like maybe we want to systematize on? And then the, the question that this one over here is answering is how are those things trending right is anybody declining like this you know this guy in blue serial proud bottom like used to be up here and is declining over 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 time right and so if i only looked at this right here i wouldn't notice the fact that the, he had been declining right and so this is why you can see the the like the impact of like a met uh, of a total with a trend ends up being very, you know, very helpful. And the same is true from a ramping perspective as well. So like you can say, Hey, like this is you know, pipeline management or sorry, pipeline, the amount of pipeline that's being owned by each of these reps um, over time. Right. Um, or, and like at, on a, on an apples to apples basis by comparing in like, you know, them at the same point in their, in their ramp. And the same thing is true over here on on customer facing meetings as um, uh, as well. Uh, and so then, when you're thinking about kind of like structuring, um, when you're thinking about structuring your you know your your dashboard here, what you can see is like you know you can think about how um, you like maybe you have a metric right here, um, and then you have like the time period and the um, and the grouping, right? Um, and, uh, uh, you can, the, the grouping right here. And so like you can, as you're kind of constructing your dashboards, what you can do is you can think about where the, um, you know, how you want to lay that out for the specific like point in time in which you're consuming this. Um, wonderful. Um, so just like really kind of quick, like, you know, advertisement here for, for Atrium, all this stuff is like literally what it is that we spend our time doing and specifically what our vision of the future is like the future state that managers deserve is that you know, they should have um, purpose-made software that is like purpose-made software made for them to provide every KPI they could possibly want for their teams, but then more importantly, proactively tracking like monitoring that for them. So whether that's like setting goals and like monitoring the progress towards those goals or the completion of those in the prior, you know, the prior week, the prior month, et cetera, et cetera. And then moreover, continuously monitoring all these KPIs in order to say, hey, this rep right here has a win rate problem right here. You need to be focused in on this. This rep over here has a conversion rate problem out of proposal right? Like you need to pay attention to, to that right there. So like monitoring this versus relying on managers to like use their eyeballs to interpret that. And then moreover doing the actual root cause analysis for, um, you know, for those managers, like, Hey, this rep has a bookings problem. The reason why he has a bookings problem is because his average selling price is dramatically lower than everybody else. Why is that right? Oh, it's because his win rate on larger deals is lower. 
great, let's fix that right there because like that's the thing that's hurting his ASP. So being able to mo like monitor and then also do that interpretation for the managers so they can spend their time actually coaching and fixing the problem versus like trying to figure out what the issue is ends up being a very imp Im very impactful thing because then like they can spend their time elevating those reps versus like you know rolling around in a bunch of charts and so that's literally what atrium does is it, it helps managers use data to improve the the performance of the reps we work with hundreds of customers right now to help with with exactly that and um like i noted earlier it takes like two or three minutes to set up a free atrium account um you know, it's a read-only connection to your to your Salesforce CRM. You can just sign up for a free account and be on your merry way. Um, wonderful. So we've talked about how to, you know, the the kind of the core concepts here and then how to systematize this. So then the next thing would be, okay, we, we're systematizing the consumption of this. Well, like, how do we do a good job at like orienting and kind of like, you know, orienting ourselves in that data and then doing like driving to a decision because like that's how we're going to change the behavior of of the reps in question um and so the thing that we have to do there is you have to detect the issue uh diagnose what the what the potential root cause might be uh and then and then communicate that with with the rep uh, and discuss that because like that's the mechanism by what like keeping it as a secret like oh i know you have this problem and i'm pretty sure that this is the root cause and if we don't like tell the rep that um in order to change your behavior that's not super helpful <laughs> um and and so we're going to kind of talk through the mechanisms by which to to do these these three things here so first um there's the the notion of like detection right um and so one of the things that you want to like look at there um, and again, this is why it's helpful to have um, in in a dashboard situation like totals and trends, is because you know you want to look for outliers, right? So you want to look for someone. This is an example here, like you know, customer facing meetings on a monthly basis. L look for people who are outperforming, because generally speaking, like they're not, you know, they're not super men, they're not super women, they're just doing something different that probably can be systematized to the rest of the team. And then on the converse, finding people who are at the bottom of the pack and you know, digging into that, that's like a really great place to like find out what's, you know, what's going on and kind of start there. And then similarly, when looking at trends, what you want to look at there is like visually um, detect like deterioration. Like this is comparisons between individuals and each other with trends. What you can do is you can compare an individual as compared to themselves over time. So we noted this earlier with respect to Cyril Proudbottom here, ridiculous demo names um you can see that he had this like substantial deterioration here it looks like there was a coaching conversation that popped back up again right so you can see a deterioration with respect to this rep right here nutsy the vulture as well so like looking for changes in that regard can help you detect a potential issue such that then you can move to root cause it um another way you can do this and this is the thing i was noting earlier um the benefit, one of the benefits of data-driven sales management software is that it can do this analysis for you. So what we were talking about here is like using our eyeballs in order to understand like who's, you know, who's at the top of the pack, who's at the bottom of the pack, what, what might be happening from a trend standpoint. All that stuff can just be done statistically too by computers. Um, and, and that's actually one of the, one of the things that our customers find very, you know, very helpful is, to like have those rather than having to use your eyes to detect that like to derive those insights instead software can just be like hey look this rep right here has way fewer opportunities than his peers like that seems like that's a problem or hey this individual right here has more new opportunities coming into his pipe on a trended basis than he has historically that's great can we get like one, give him a high five. All that prospecting that you've been having him do is, is working out also can we get other people to do that as well Right. So these would be examples of like detecting issues or on the flip side, not issues, but like good stuff that we can then systematize. The next thing that you want to do, um, once you kind of detect uh, like a potential issue is, is root causing of like what might be driving that. And so the mechanism by which to, um, the mechanism by which to do that in, um, you know, in a manual fashion is to use what, what we kind of call these like a driver tree, a metrics driver tree. And what you can see here is 
this is like a visualization of how all of these metrics are related to each other. So like, you know, as an example, this is the AE version. So where do bookings come from? Bookings come from wins, cross with ASP, cross with the average deal cycle. Okay, well, like, where does wins come from? Well, wins comes from win rate, cross with attempts. Okay, well, like, where does win rate come from? Well, win rate comes from a lot of places. <laughs> so if someone's got a problematic win rate, what you might have to do is look at a variety of other metrics to say, oh, okay, is it a pipe hygiene problem? That would be indicated by a bunch of untouched opportunities or stuck opportunities. Is it you know, an opportunity conversion problem? Like are things falling out of the pipe at proposal, right? Um, or alternatively, like maybe it's actually not a win rate problem. Maybe instead it's a average selling price problem, as I kind of noted earlier. Oh, okay. Well, where does ASP come from? Well, ASP comes from a variety of things. It comes from average op size, maybe it comes from discounting. And so by narrowing in, like if you have a bookings issue or you have a, you know, you're, you're looking forward to the forecast and you're saying, hey, this person's light with respect to um this person's light with respect to their their forecast you can go right right to the right here um and and kind of like sniff out where that might be and we actually have these i threw in my backpack over there um we actually have these both for sdrs and for aes in laminate form which is like pretty cool um and i think we actually have a sign up form for that so maybe we can drop that into the in the chat here if people want to sign up to get um copies of these these driver trees but in in laminate format um we can we can get those sent out to you um cool and so then the last um the last part here is essentially the, the communication and like looping back, right? And so the best mechanism by which to do that is really that, um, you know, data-driven one-on-one where you've got, you know, you got an agenda, like it's on the calendar, you got the assets in, um, it's on the calendar, you got the assets in question. Um, and then moreover, what you're doing is you're like, you bring to the meeting a topic that you've detected, right? Or like maybe it's an existing coaching um, topic that you're, you're working on. Um, and you talk about it there, prescribe a, an action plan with accountability hooks, and then loop back. And so, um, and then the, the bigger version of that, of course, is that you can do that in a QBR as well. So like have a system where you have like QBRs on the calendar once a quarter, look back at what, you know, the historical performance looked like, um, where there were shortfalls, where there was areas of, of performance um, or outperformance, and then do, do the same thing on the flip side, like looking forward as well. So these are really great ways of systematizing the, um, the communication of those issues and like the looping back to, to address things. Wonderful. So that's kind of like the concepts. Um, what we're going to do now is kind of talk, give some examples of how like how this works in practice, just like some some kind of case studies here. And so um, these are actually, you know, examples from our sales organization. Uh, this is one of the things that we really like is that, especially now that we have, you know, a fairly large sales organization, not super large, but um, we're, like we're able to use Atrium to manage our own sales team uh, and be, you know, one of our primary customers there. And so these are all examples from our own org. Um, so. Example one, there was a rep who was on track for a miss for a given month. Uh, and what was weird, like he was on track for a revenue miss. Um, and so it was like very odd because when we looked at his new opportunity inflow um, across like the trailing time period there, it was, you know, back, back here, um, his opportunity inflow was like very consistent, right? Like you kind of see this, like at no point was it like, you know, super low or what have you. So that was like very confusing that this rep would not have like be tracking poorly with respect to, um, you know, to, to bookings because like their inputs were, were fine. Um, when we dug a little deeper and we ended up looking at um, like the number of stage progressions, like how many of those ops that were coming into his pipe actually got to various stages. So in this case, how many had gotten to stage two. So like, I mean, we have like a five state step sales process, right? So like stage zero meeting pending stage one is like, you know, meeting happened and like discovery, you're in discovery uh, stage three, you, like you light up somebody's account, like turn on an atrium account. And, and like, now there's a sales process in place because we sell on, on customer data with a live atrium account. And so what, what was really fascinating is that even though he had this like really great consistency of opportunity inflow here, um, one of the things that you, you'll note here is um, he 
uh, had this this like dip, this like very substantial dip in the number of opportunities that had gotten into uh, stage two, right? So that was like, whoa, okay, got it, right? Um, and that was like a holy holy mackerel moment there because you can see like this is a pretty substantial dip here as compared to the other reps on the team there, even in spite of the fact that the opportunity inflows there. And so that was like, a, oh, wow. So we kind of like figured out what the, re like, like, obviously there was an issue tracking poorly with respect to bookings. We kind of like looked around a little bit. We're like, is it this? What's your meeting volume look like? Now that's fine. That's fine. Eventually we found this. We're like, oh man, you had this, this air pocket of stage progressions, right? To this, you know, to this particular stage that then injured to like, we have a 60 day sales cycle. So like injured you two months later. And so what we did in order to make sure that this, we didn't have that problem again, <laughs> right? Cause like, you don't want to learn a lesson and then like, you know, you don't want to learn a lesson and then, uh, and then like in one ear and out the other, what we then did was like, we put together a, um, some assets on that to monitor early stage op progression, right? So like how many discos, uh, disco plus bot per AE is happening this month, right? And then we actually, we set a goal on it in Atrium. Like, hey, did we get to the, like last month, did our AEs get to the right number of disco plus um, ops, like getting to stage two or better? Um, did they get to the level that, that we needed them to be at? And then moreover, how are they tracking this month? So this was like the loop, right? The OODA loop in practice where, you know, we saw an issue. We're like, oh man, this looks like problematic. Um, we kind of like reasoned against it. We oriented like, okay, like what's going on here? What's causing this problem, et cetera, et cetera. We eventually like converged on what we saw was the root cause. And then what we did was like, we put a mechanism in place by which to avoid that in like that problem in the future. Right. And so, you know, I'm, we'll make another mistake or different mistake in the future, <laughs> but but in this case, we have you know avoided repeating this mistake right here, and that's data driven coaching. So like in this case, it's data driven coaching with respect to that individual rep, but then also systematized across the rest of the team as well, because what oftentimes happens is like this rep has this problem, like you know problem A, at one point in time, that problem will probably show up in other reps as well at different points in time. And so if you can find that issue and then isolate it and like solve it, you've now solved it for the whole team. And that's extremely impactful. Um, cool. So second example here around data-driven um, sales coaching. Um, this is a rep who was having issues moving ops through the, through the funnel. This is a different rep. Uh, and so one of the things that we were able to do is use the... Um, opportunity conversion card that Atrium has that measures on the y-axis here is the conversion rate um, for any given stage to the next stage. And so you can see like these are the different stages down here. And you can see that this rep in orange here um, was a little light with respect to conversion out of stage zero, not like super much, but then you can see that he really had a problem in in moving things um, out of proposal and then converting things out of out of contract. And and of course the blue line here is like the the team average in in question. And so now that we identified that this rep had a problem of getting things out of proposal um, and getting things, you know, and then also things kind of falling out of contract, we're able to focus in on that as a thing to coach and fix. And then and work accordingly. And so what we did was we worked on at the interestingly, like we worked at the top of the funnel on discovery to make sure that they were doing a good job of like like doing a good job, making sure they're doing good discovery. Um, and you can kind of see that they had this like dip in conversion out of discovery here. So that this dip coaching was put into place in order to drive that better, that pops back up again there. And so then moreover, what happens is like by doing a better job at being good at discovery, that was then driving more opportunities into this. In this case, this is like a stage and in, in our, our pilot process is met is in like is a stage. And you can see this rep here at the same kind of point in time was like bumping along, not getting that many ops into pilot. You know, we fix this discovery process and then boom right? The number of, of uh, ops that are getting into that stage three or whatever it is, this pilot stage, um, you know, goes to the roof here, 
which is super, super impactful. Um, we also worked on late stage behaviors as well. And you can see the conversion rates here, like the win rate out of proposal went from, you know, around like 60% or so and like jumped up to 80 to 100%, which is like way, way better. And so what happened was we went from this situation down here where the conversion rate out of proposal or the conversion rate of the contract out was like so mediocre to being above, like above average on the team in both of those situations there, right? And so this is an example of like, we saw a problem, you know, we focus in on that with the rep, we change their behavior, say, hey, we're gonna focus on this, we're gonna do these behaviors, we're gonna do the, like, we're gonna do these mock calls, we're gonna do this call coaching, we're gonna have you like be more aggressive with respect to like making, we're gonna make sure that you're doing all your disco questions, we're gonna make sure that you're, um, you're getting things out of proposal. And, and like, lo and behold, we, when we go back and look, like, did the metrics actually change? They did. And the great thing about this is, like, you can see that a ton, a ton, a ton of, um, you know, uh, like, this rep went from having this amount of pipeline in their in their pipe to subsequent to that because they did such a good job of getting more and more and more ops further down funnel, their pipeline just started, going, like, stacking, 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 stacking. And, of course, deal cycle later, two deal cycles later, those turn into deals, right? And so this is a great example. Like this is data-driven um, coaching in in action. And like this right here is is like this in practice. So like by using data to diagnose the issue and then coach up our reps to like fix their bit, like the problematic behaviors, you take those people who are like in the middle of like bottom middle of the pack, you raise them up. You take the people who are in the middle of the pack, you raise them up. And so by doing that across your, the, your entire team, you just drive better performance across the entire organization, right? So six reps who have their pipeline stacking and stacking and stacking like this is going to positively impact your bookings in, in a deal cycle or two. Um, Cool. So like, so that's data driven coaching, uh, data driven sales, sales coaching. I hope you guys enjoyed the um, uh, enjoy the presentation there. Again, if you'd like um, to get a copy of Crushing Quota and Five Secrets of the Sales Coach, they're at, both of them are absolutely fantastic. Um, go ahead and sign up for a um, for a copy of uh, of those. And then if if you're ready to get going on you know data driven sales management and data driven coaching, I really do highly recommend. Um, you know, going and, and setting up a, um, you know, a, a free Atrium account it takes three minutes. Like just go to atriumhq.com and you can just sign in with your, um, your Salesforce account and you'll be on your, you'll be on your merry way. Um, hey, Joni, we make it. Hi, Pete. We sure did. you done All it right. in perfect time too. All Amazing. right. Killer. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate everyone for being here today and thank you, Pete for all of that, all the good resources. I'm glad that you guys can get to those. Um, it looks like we have one question in the chat. Did you want to take a look at that one, Pete? Um, when adding a custom filter, is that way to add a date filter to the custom filter? I'm not sure what, um, this might be a product question. Yes, I think in short, the answer is yes, you can you can do this. But I think this is a one of our lovely um, Atrium customers here. And so I will follow up with her. Amazing. Offline. Okay. Yeah. Like they're thank everywhere. You, thank you. They're here <laughs> they're in Atlanta. They're, they're, they're here <laughs> in Atlanta. They're here. They're here on the, uh, on the webinar. It's super awesome. Bailey, I'll follow thank up with you offline. Good to see you. Thanks for attending. Um, all right. Thank you, thank see you, you later, Joni. Take care. Bye. Thank you.